Oh, well, hello there. Welcome back to Maniac Math with Mrs. Carell. Make sure you've got your video notes page and a pencil and we'll get started. Up at the top of your page where it says title of video, I want you to write multiplication number 1F practice. You can always abbreviate multiplication as M-U-L-T period. Right below that where it says important term or definition, write multiplication is just repeated addition. When you have that written, come on back. All right, remember, you are only responsible for writing what is inside this big green box here. You do not have to copy the problem, but I will read the problem to you. Mrs. Carell wants to give five candy canes to each of her 33 students. How many candy canes will Mrs. Carell need to do this? Well, if you recall from the video you should have just gotten done watching, we are going to be doing what's called the lattice method of multiplication. It looks like this. I need to multiply 33 by 5 because if I gave one kiddo, there we go, there's one kiddo, if I gave him five candy canes and I gave the next kiddo, gave her five candy canes and another kiddo five candy canes, well, I've only gotten three students done. I'd have to draw a total of 33 cute little faces and then give all of them five and then add all of that stuff up. Since we're just adding the same number of candy canes each time, that means we can multiply because remember, multiplication is repeated addition. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to write the number 5 right here and the number 33 just like this. The hardest part of this whole deal is drawing the boxes. You're going to draw one rectangle and then split it in half down the middle. So the 3 gets its own box and the other 3 gets its own box. The 5 is just going to hang out here on the side. Now, we're going to draw diagonal lines, just two of them. One, two. Make sure they're going this direction from the upper right down to the lower left of each square. Upper right to the lower left. Now then, here comes the fun part. We can multiply in either one of these squares first if we want to. So let's just say we wanted to multiply over here. Well, if the 3 is going this direction and the 5 is going this direction, when they crash into each other and multiply each other, we're going to get 15. So we're going to write 15 right here. Now the top numbers are always driving down and the numbers on the right are always driving to the left. So what crashes in this square? 3 and a 5. Multiply those together and we get 15 again. Okay. We are now done with these numbers. We've used them. We don't need them anymore. All we're looking at right now is what is inside of our little rectangle, also known as a lattice. And I'm going to extend my diagonal lines just a little ways. And what we're going to be looking at is each diagonal column. Remember, we're done with these ones that I crossed off out here. We're just looking inside the rectangle. In this diagonal column, I have 5. In this diagonal column, I have a 5 and a 1, so I'm going to add those together. 5 plus 1 gives me 6. In the last diagonal column, I have 1. So there's nothing else to add. I'm just going to put a 1 right there. Now take a look at the outside here, outside of our rectangle. I have 165, 165. That is our answer to 33 times 5, the answer is 165. And if you remember the standard algorithm way, what we would do is we would say 3 times 5 is 15, and then we would say 3 times 5 is 15, plus that little 1 would give us 16. All right, on to the next problem. All right. Problem number two. If Charlie the dog buries 49 bones every day for four days, how many bones is that? Well, that's going to be one very busy dog, I can tell you that. So if we think about this and we said, okay, day number one, he buried 49 bones. Day number two, he buried 49 bones. Day number three, he buried 49 bones. Are you seeing a pattern here? Day number four, he buried 49 bones. So we would have to add all of these up. Since we are adding the same number, 49, we can just multiply it by 4. So we're going to write our 4 up here and our 9 there, and the 4 goes over here to the side. 
Now remember, the numbers on the top drive down, the number on the right drives to the left. Remember, the hardest part is the drawing. Draw one rectangle, split it in half right down the middle, and then draw two diagonal lines. Do not make a big X inside of these boxes. We're just cutting it in half. And if you look, there's two triangles. Start at the top right, to the lower left, top right, to the lower left. All right, so now we can look at this square right here. What two numbers would crash there? A nine and a four. So if you were pretending nine was a car and four was a car and they each have to go the direction of that arrow, they would crash in this square. When they crash, they have to multiply by each other. So nine times four would be 36. Okay, now in this square, what would crash? Well, it would be this four and that four. Four times four is 16. Okay, now we're going to extend those diagonal lines just a little bit. But remember, we are now done with these outside numbers. We are just looking inside. So in this diagonal column, all I have is the six. So I can write a six right here. In the second diagonal column, I have a six and a three. Well, six plus three is nine. And in the last diagonal column, I have one. One is just one. So our answer is 196. And if you think about it, the standard algorithm way, it would look like this. And remember, we would have our lines that we use to set things up and our little notes area. Nine times four would be 36. Four times four is 16 plus the three. 16 plus three is 19. 196. Same thing, two different ways of doing it. Okay, problems three, four, five, and six, you are going to do on your own, and I'm gonna help you set up the first two, number three and four, and then you get to set up five and six on your own because I'm sure that you can do it. If 38 students each check out four books, how many books is that? Well, if you think about it, if we have students, student number one checks out four books, student number two checks out four books, Student number three checks out four books. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to draw 38 little faces and put a four next to each one of them. And then we have to add them all up to find out how many books is that? Well, since we're adding the same number, adding four, we can multiply instead. So we would say 38 times four. 38 times four, okay? That one is set up for you, and if you want to go ahead and draw the diagonal lines out the bottom, you can do that. They don't need to go out the top. Problem number four is if four kids had 67 Legos each, how many Legos is that? Four kids had 67 Legos each. So here's one kid, and he has 67 Legos. And here's another one, and he has 67 Legos. And the next kid, 67 Legos, and the last kid, 67 Legos. And then we would have to add them all up to find out how many doggone Legos is that. Well, since we're adding the same number, 67, every single time, we can just multiply 67 times 4. Like I said, if you want to extend the two diagonal lines out like this, you can do that. All right. The la last two problems you're going to set up on your own. Problem number five says Mrs. Carell has 72 students. Heaven forbid. She wants to give each student four cans of Play-Doh. How many cans will she need? This is important stuff. How many cans of Play-Doh am I going to need if I give four cans to each kid? We really do not want to draw 72 kids and write four cans of Play-Doh underneath every single one of the 72 faces. But since we are adding the number four multiple times, you know what to do. Set it up and give it a try. And problem number six is, there are 63 contestants at the hot dog eating contest. If each contestant eats four hot dogs, how many hot dogs will they need for the contest? 
63 contestants. Do we really want to draw 63 people and write down four hot dogs underneath each one of them? No, I have better things to do, like go to recess. So I want to get this done more quickly. I'll bet you do too. How would you set up that problem and do it on your own? I know you can do this. Give it a try.